Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keep Fish Simple. So, in today's vlog, we are going to be doing some stuff like we do in all of our vlogs. In today's vlog, we're going to be moving a bunch of fish around. I'm going to be giving you guys some updates on some of the projects that we've done in previous vlogs. So, a lot of the koi breeding and stuff like that, we've been breeding a ton of koi doris in the fish room. There's just like literally so many. So, I'm going to show you guys all of them. We've got to move a lot of stuff around. We're actually running out of a little bit of room in here, and I kind of want to try and start on some new projects in this video. So without any further ado, let me flip around the camera and show you guys some stuff. So if you come and have a look in the fish room, you can see there's just fish everywhere at the moment. There's literally just fish everywhere you look. Um, there's a lot of fish in here and not a lot of space for some stuff that we need to make space for. So in particular, one of the issues that we've had lately is this batch of angelfish. Now, these guys are some dark marble angels and excuse the glare, it's a little bit rough in this tank because it's so dark, but you can see most of them have nipped fins and the reason is because they're nipping each other's fins because this tank's so dark they can't see properly and they just keep nipping each other and we need to get them out of this tank and into a proper tank where they can actually see each other and this is a quick lesson for everyone here who wants to breed dark fish you need to keep them in light tanks so they don't eat each other so we've got to move these guys out there's a few tanks over like on this side of the fish room that have some of these large adult Monica Peru angelfish or these Peruvian ultimate angelfish and this tank's going to be cleared out. We're also going to be putting some fish down in this tank. We're going to be putting some more angelfish grow outs in here. There's just some little baby bristlenose in here and uh, we're only going to be putting some small angelfish in here so they'll cohabitate pretty well and grow out together pretty well. But as for quarries, I mean there is so many in the fish room at the moment it's not even funny. So if you come in and have a look in here you'll see that we've got a ton of these baby quarries along the bottom of this tank. Now, there's a ton up the back there next to that sponge filter you can see right there. And these guys are not from the series that we did. These guys are the batch after that and there's about a hundred of them in this tank. If you come to the tank next door, you'll see there's a ton more of these little baby quarries now in here. There's Similis, there's Pandas, there's Trilineatus and there's some Sturbys in here. In the tank next door to that, we've got even more quarries. We've got some more Pandas and some more stuff like that tank before. So lots of baby quarries in here. If you come in here to this tank, we've got a fresh batch of these new little baby quarries. So these guys are absolutely so small. You can see one there in the middle of the screen. These guys are just some more pandas and just some assorted quarries. So there's probably like 200 in this tank. Now I'll link the video up in the top right hand corner to the vlog where we bred these guys. But these guys are the Sturbi quarries that we bred in a previous vlog. And you can see they're all developing very, very well. We've got lots of them. They're uh, all hiding underneath these plants. And they've actually knocked over that plant, so I'll need to fix that up. But lots of these guys in here, all doing very, very well. And these guys are gonna stay in here for the remainder of their growing out before they move on to their new homes and get sold. So you can see there's just a massive amount of these guys in the fish room at the moment. There's just so many quarries being produced in here and I'm really, really happy with how things are going. And you might be wondering, why am I producing so many quarries? And I've talked about this in previous vlogs, but quarries are very, very high demand fish. A lot of people want them and they actually do fetch a little bit of a higher price than some of the other species that I produce in the fish room, like angelfish and things like that. Now, yes, they do take a little bit more work, but it's definitely worth producing them because I can barely get these guys onto wholesale lists. Literally, every time I have them available on my website, they sell out pretty quick and I don't even really get to get them to the shops or anything like that because they sell out straight away. So thank you guys so much for doing that. But the main point of today's vlog is that I wanted to try and breed something a little bit more challenging and something that I've wanted to breed for a little bit of time but haven't really gotten anything to work or stick. And that is my gold laser quarries. So if you come on down to this tank, if we lift up this Java moss, they're gonna scurry away very, very quickly. But in here we have the colony of these gold laser quarries. Now you can see, how fantastic they look. They've got that really, really cool gold stripe. And they're a little bit of a shy fish for me. I don't know whether they are shy for other people who keep these guys, but I think I've gotten them to spawn once. It was just like a random water change and they seem to have spawned, but none of the eggs were viable. And I've been trying a bunch of different things with these guys. I've been trying water changes and I've been trying boosting the flow. And I've talked about this in previous vlogs, but I haven't gotten anything to work. So. In today's vlog, we're gonna be trying to do that again. I haven't really given it a red hot crack, but you can see if we lift this up, there's a few fat females and we're not gonna really be able to see it because they just scurry away so quickly. There's a few fat females in here and they have been showing a little bit more signs of breeding behavior. So we're gonna be giving it a go. 
and seeing whether we can't get these guys to breed. We're also in this vlog going to be trying to get a spawn from these guys which are my Koidor Similis and these guys are a little bit of a shy Koi so you can see there's one right in the middle of the screen and I've snuck up on them. So that's a male there. They have this very very cool leopard pattern to them and this violet stripe at the back of them and I've only produced maybe 50 of them in the fish room now. These guys have not had a water change for about a month and the water level in this tank has dropped significantly so we're going to be filling this up and we're also going to be adding some tannins so we're going to be adding a ton of leaf litter so we're going to be adding some Indian almond leaves and dropping the pH and putting a ton of tannin in the water and making it really murky and then tomorrow or the day after we're going to be boosting it up with some RO water mixed with some tap water and seeing if we don't get another spawn from these guys. So, and then our game plan with these gold laser quarries is we're just going to be doing a big cold water change today and we're going to continue to feed lots of live white worms. We're also going to be feeding a ton of live white worms to our similar quarries and we're going to be trying to get these guys as fat as possible and see if we can't spawn them. So let's get to work. Okay, so we just wrapped that up and you can see these guys are a little bit more playful now that they've had that water change. So we'll see how they go. If they don't breed tomorrow, well, we'll just keep trying and trying and trying until we eventually have some success. I'll be doing a little bit of research and trying to figure out some of the ways to get these guys to spawn. So I'll just keep trying with these guys and see what happens. And the same goes for these similar quarries. They're not going to breed tomorrow, I don't think. So. Hopefully some of these Indian almond leaves up the top, you can see them all there. Hopefully they start to release some tannins and drop the pH in the water and then we can do a big water change and trigger them that way. So I'll catch up with you guys in the morning and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it's now the next day and we've just wrapped up some jobs and if you come down to our gold laser quarry tank, you can see that we still don't have any breeding. Now these guys are running around pretty frantically and I don't know if it's breeding behavior or what it is really. You can see there's a huge clump of white worms in the middle of the screen there. And this morning I came in and I was a little bit disappointed that these guys hadn't spawned yet. But I did throw a ton of these white worms in there and they're gonna be eating on these throughout the day and really fattening up on that protein and hopefully going to be filling with eggs. So these guys haven't spawned. We're going to give them another water change and see if that doesn't work. We do have a power head up the back of the tank blowing a ton of flow in here, which they seem to enjoy and should be helping them to think that it's breeding time. So we'll see how we go with these guys. I'm not as hopeful as I was at the start of the video, but we'll see what happens. If we come on over to the Simulus tank, you can see we've got one right there in the middle of the screen as well. These guys haven't spawned yet, but those Indian almond leaves have been releasing a ton of tannins overnight. And they've deepened the color of the water significantly. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a big water change. We're just going to be topping up the tank with a bit of RO. If you guys don't know what RO is, it's just reverse osmosis water. So it's just pure water. And this should help these guys to think there's been a big rain and hopefully they will spawn as well. These guys as well have been grazing on some white worms from this morning. So we'll see how they go. I'm more hopeful for these guys to have a spawn if I'm being honest. So let's give these guys their water changes. Okay, so we just wrapped that up and I'm not too sure what's going to happen. We're just going to have to give it a bit of time. I think the Similis will breed, but I don't know about the gold lasers. So I'd appreciate any information you guys have. Like, leave it down below in the comments. I mean, I don't know everything. I'm not, you know, a fish keeping master and I'm still learning things too. So if you guys have any knowledge or you've bred them before, let me know about how you breed your gold lasers because I've been struggling with it a little bit. but. I'll catch up with you guys this afternoon and see what's happening. Hopefully something's happened. And if nothing's happened this afternoon, I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. And yeah. Okay, so it's now the Arvo. And if we come down to our Similis tank, I just came in before and I noticed these guys were swimming around pretty frantically. I'm pretty sure that's signs of breeding behavior. So it's only the afternoon. I think they might spawn tomorrow morning if we're lucky. So we'll keep an eye out for that. But if they don't spawn, that's kind of a little bit annoying. 
but I think they will, and if they don't, we'll just keep being patient until they eventually do spawn. But the main thing with these guys is keeping that low pH, and that's how you get the spawn, so that's how I've been breeding these guys. But I thought I'd quickly show you guys, because not a lot has happened in this video. I mean, there's tons of quarries in the fish room, like if you come over to our trilineatus tank, these guys have been a lot more fruitful and have been producing a ton of eggs. So if you come and look in the spawning mop, excuse a little bit of that glare, but you can see there's quite a few eggs within that spawning mop, so we're gonna harvest those out. I already harvested about 50 out this morning, so they have bread this afternoon as well. So that's really, really good to see. I mean, you guys have seen all the fry that we had at the start of the video right here. So this is only some of the fry that we have in the fish room at the moment. There's just so many quarries being produced. So I think a couple of days of just, you know, slow production isn't too bad. We still got off camera quite a few more panda eggs and some trilineatus, like I was saying before. So I think that we're just gonna have to be patient and wait until the similar quarries eventually do breed. So that's a little bit annoying, but I thought I'd quickly before this vlog wraps up go through and talk about some of the future projects that you guys can expect to see on the channel and some of the other things that I want to try and get done in the fish room in the coming weeks. One of the important things that I want to get done in the fish room is if you come over to these two tanks, you can see these two tanks are three foot tanks. Now this one's a little bit stubbier because I needed to make it shorter so that I could fit all of these tanks in the fish room. So the top layer of tanks in the fish room are a little bit shorter, but that doesn't matter for what we're trying to do. And one of the future projects that we're going to be doing is lately my production of discus in the fish room has been pretty poor. I've only had one successful spawn and the other times it just hasn't been as good. And I'm putting it down to a lack of tank size. So these three foot tanks are a lot bigger than the two foot tanks that we're currently keeping our two pairs of discus in. And I'm believing that if we start to use these tanks for our discus production, it will be a lot more successful. So what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be taking these tanks down once we've sold all of these Ultima Angel fish that you can get on the website down below. Once these all go to a wholesaler and this tank's cleared out, we're actually gonna be emptying these two tanks and painting them white so the discus can only see out this way. And hopefully, that'll help the discus to focus on breeding and we're just going to try and keep these tanks as immaculate and clean as possible and see if we can't fix the discus pairs that way and then if we come over here to one of our tanks full of some betters that we bred you can notice that these guys are all half moon picards and you guys have been really just asking me heaps and heaps and heaps for another better breeding video and i thought i try and you know divvy it up a little bit and try and breed a new type of better so one of the future betters that we're going to be breeding in the fish room are some dumbo eared betters so a lot of people I've been just asking for these guys for a very long time, like the shops ask for them all the time, and I've been wanting to produce a bunch of these guys. So we're gonna be getting some Dumbo betters, and we're gonna be breeding those, and we're also gonna be breeding a few other different types of betters, so stay tuned for that. I also wanna talk more about how to breed bristlenose and breed bristlenose efficiently. So I've been breeding quite a lot of bristlenose, but I haven't been doing the best like that I can with the space that I've got. I wanna try and figure out what's the best way to breed bristlenose and you know the ratios of sexes per tank to get the most production. So I'm thinking that we're gonna do like two males per like three or four females and see if we can't get a ton of bristlenose being produced. So we've got one big male in here, but there's a bunch of different bristlenose throughout the fish room that we're gonna to have to consolidate and see whether we can't get some better breeding going on. Now, if you look up the back of this tank, this is another Cory Grow Art tank. You're not gonna be able to see these guys too well, but up the back here, are some CPDs, so some Celestial Pearl Danios, and I talked about this earlier in the video, but I do wanna try and breed these guys, so there's gonna be a future breeding series, or I don't know, breeding vlogs on that. And finally, you can see these bins that we were previously attempting to breed Corys in have been shut down, so we're gonna be trying to do this again. I think it's gonna work. We've got a bunch of these albino Corys that you can see down there in the bottom of this tank. There's a huge colony of these guys that I wanna try and just show you guys how to breed properly and on a larger scale. So we're gonna be trying to breed these guys again in different types of bins. I'm looking at getting some big clear bins to put here and seeing if we can't do this properly. That video was kind of successful and a lot of people enjoyed it and wanted to see another part of it. So we're gonna be doing that in a future video. So stay around for that one as well. And yeah, excuse my hair. I just went and played touch footy. So that's why it's a little bit weird, but there's a whole bunch of things I wanna be doing in the fish room. So yeah, I mean, sorry for this short vlog. Sorry that a lot didn't happen in it. I hope you guys still enjoyed this vlog and learned something from it. Stay tuned. There's a lot of videos gonna be coming out now that got a little bit more free time. And I'm gonna be really trying to focus on doing a lot of really cool projects in the fish room. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys found it informational and you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one.